This program is brought to you by First National Bank of Botswana. FNB, how can we help you? Good evening and welcome to this week's episode of First Issues. Thank you so much for joining us. The overview of business in the country has not been satisfactory for various players in the economy. This is owing to a slowed domestic growth of below 4% in 2019, resulting from a reduction in diamond production and weak local and global demand. This has presented a need for accelerated diversification efforts given the over-reliance of the economy on mining with limited expansion to manufacturing and agriculture. Even during these tough economic times, there are some entities who are proving to be weathering the storm. The biggest commercial bank in Botswana, First National Bank Botswana, announced the half-year results for the six months ended 31 December 2019, which were nothing short of stellar. The announcement was made last week at Masa Square Hotel, where the bank presented a 12% profit after tax, 47% cost to income and 25.4% return on equity. The bank's CEO Stephen Bohatu and CFO Luke Woodford sat with first issues to discuss the key points of the results, especially on how they were achieved despite the challenges present. The results, as Luke will indicate, uh, show that the profit before tax grew by 13%. Um, it was driven by a number of issues, but uh, suffices to say uh, the most prominent drivers were um, the increase in transactions, uh, NIR as a result of increase in transactions, increase in uh, number of merchants that we are rolling out POS devices to, um, increase in volumes and transactional volumes. Um, they were also uh, triggered by uh, containment of our impairment charges um, as a result of the focus that we've been placing in the collection space uh, in order to ensure that uh, the efficiencies that we're getting there. So if you remember at the end of last year, full year presentation, we indicated that we're going to focus a lot on efficiencies and that's exactly what we have begun to see uh, with these results. Oh, Luke, do you have anything to say perhaps giving more detail into the attributables that you gave? I, th I think the I think it's worth mentioning the investment we've made in the year. So we've increased our operating costs by 8%. A lot of that increase has come on the back of uh, driving these revenue growths. So with the uh, efficiencies in collections and the likes, uh, we've employed more people, we've put in new systems and processes, we've enhanced what we're doing in that space. Uh, with regards to the point of sale devices, we've put down a number of new devices, which has come at a cost to the bank. Uh, we've also improved our connectivity so the devices are up more often and I, um, and I think on the basis of that investment we've really seen good results come through. So the overall economic business, um, the outlook of the economy, how has it affected business overall? I mean we are seeing growth but obviously there's been some issues that have been arising, you know, so how are they affecting business now and how do you foresee them affecting business in the long run? So it has been a, a, a difficult environment. If I just divide it into two segments, uh, if I look at the retail segment, um, there's always appetite in the retail segment. Uh, but what worries us, uh, what worries me, is the fact that um, the, there's a lot of pressure on disposable income in the retail space. Um, so you have to be very careful and prudent uh, how you open tabs in the retail segment. So despite the fact that government increased revenues um, the increasing level of unemployment is putting a strain on disposable incomes uh, for the retail segment. Uh, so we, we, we have had to exercise um, prudent measures, to put in prudent measures uh, in order to cap growth in that particular segment. If you look at the business segment, for instance, um, I think the sentiments are that we are beginning to see things moving in the right direction. Um, we are beginning to see issues that the business community has previously complained about being resolved, uh, such, as, such as the work permit issues um, and, and other blockages that uh, we previously had. So we are beginning to see a positive move towards removing removal of those blockages. Um, so to, to some extent, 
uh, as well as the effect that we are operating in a low interest rate environment. Uh, we are beginning to see um, an, an, an improvement in credit extension uh, to the, by the business community, um, which says they are creating opportunities for growth and they are finding expansion opportunities. So look, with, with that, the, the last bit of his statement, the low interest rates, how are they affecting you as a business, the numbers that is? In a low interest rate environment, uh, from a bank we would expect that we would have lower impairment charges, so the affordability would go, um, would go up on, on a number of products. Um, we have seen the low interest rate environment uh, result in, in increased advances to, to certain retail customers, so that has allowed for some opening up of affordability. Um, but we haven't seen the slowdown of, of defaults that typically we'd want to see with, with a reducing interest rate. Um, so I believe the 25 basis points that has been reduced during the, during the, the period of re we've reported hasn't in a sense uh, alleviated the consumer pressure that Steve spoke to um, enough to reduce retail defaults sufficiently. Um, on the back of that, for financial results, I think we see a, we see a reduction in, in rates to customers, which is great for, for our customers, our lending customers. Uh, we don't pass that all on to our deposit customers. So in this environment, the bank's margins conventionally would get uh, compressed slightly, mm -hmm. which, like I say, we would want to see an offset in the impairment charge. That's typically what we'd see in any banking market. Um, but where we stand at the moment, we haven't seen that offset. So we have seen a compression of our margins over the past few years on this basis. When running a business means... Where did I put that receipt? We can help you with instant accounting. Free software that does your bookkeeping for you. <laughs> when running a business means... Wait, why do you mean the container hasn't arrived? We help protect your business from risk with Mohwebi Insurance. And when it means... How do we pay our staff that don't have bank accounts? We help you make multiple payments directly to people's phones with e-wallet bulk send. At FNB, we're constantly innovating to help business owners at every stage of their journey. Welcome back to First Issues. We continue our discussion on the FNB half-year results where the bank's CFO, Luke Woodford, expounds on the 30% increase on transfer duty for foreign nationals who are looking to buy property would be affecting their loan book. The 30% transfer duty for foreign pur foreigners purchasing property, uh, which may affect the demand, um, the qualified demand of so four properties in the market. Um, on the back of that, we're, we're yet to see the full impact. Obviously, it's a very new development. But I think we're very excited about the first-time ownership, um, where that's gone down to 0% for citizens to own properties for the first time. Um, so that 0% transfer duty is going to allow a lot more people to buy their first homes. Uh, and we obviously want to, to uh, accommodate that as much as possible. So we'll ensure that our products and our offering matches this and, and is able to enable uh, Botswana to buy homes. So, so there will be um, sub-segments that will be affected. Um, for instance, um, foreigners we know play in particular segments of the property market. Uh, and those are the segments that we expect to be impacted. Um, for instance, properties over a, a, a certain value and in certain locations uh, may be affected. Um, but I don't believe that it's going to affect um, every sector, like Luke said, uh, that it's going, to aff it's going to have a devastating impact on the entire property uh, portfolio. Um, so there will be areas that will be affected, but overall um, the benefits that Luke alluded to uh, will remain and may those positive sentiments may outweigh any negative sentiments associated with the increase for foreigners. At this point, I'd like for us to speak about more concerns, you know, as a bank you're moving towards um, or from the brick to the clicks. And with that, as far as digitizing processes brings about the issue of loss of jobs, for example. So as a bank, how is this whole initiative going to be affecting your staff complement, if at all? Statistics from the um, World Economic Forum 
indicate that uh, with digitization, with robotics, uh, there will be an impact on employment. Uh, so some jobs, some new jobs are going to be created, some new opportunities are going to be created, um, but they inevitably will be some loss of jobs. So what, how we are handling it here at FNB um, is not necessarily an, an, an exit. Uh, we're not driving retrenchments, we're not uh, driving exits. As and when opportunities present themselves, uh, for instance, when people retire or people resign, uh, we look at uh, various areas and we just decide how best to optimize uh, with the resources that are remaining uh, and not necessarily uh, retrench. That's one thing uh, that we are doing. The second thing that we are doing um, is we, are, we have afforded opportunities to our staff members to reskill themselves uh, so that uh, the new opportunities that are going to occasion uh, digitization and robot robotics, uh, staff members can uh, take up those opportunities. We are also looking at outsourcing certain functions within the bank in order to bring efficiencies and opportunities for those outs for that outsource are going to be given to staff members who may be interested in pursuing those business ventures. So Luke, um, with this, we're still on the issue of digitization. Um, you, um, or the bank, encourages customers to move from using cash to swiping. And with the, the, the incentive to that is that the swiping is free. So how is that compensated for as far as the bank is concerned? Because there's a cost to it. We have made it free in the past year that anyone with a transactional account can swipe their card with no cost. Mm -hmm. Um, in addition to that, we've put two other rewards. One was the Swipe and Win campaigns, where we gave away a number of cars in the past year. Um, and we've also increased our cash back rewards. So if people swipe and they have digital transactions, they receive more cash back um, via, via into their savings pockets. So directly into a savings accounts to encourage savings. Where that money in the ecosystem has been unlocked, per se, is that the, the merchants now have more devices. They've got more reliable devices. And the bank is paying away less fees to other banks for facilitating these transactions. In addition to that, we've put down a number of more devices in the year. So an extra 1,300 devices over the past year to, to ensure that wherever a client does want to swipe, that they have that opportunity. So this, this, this mix has really where the saving for the merchants then comes in is the cost of cash is quite high. So if you, if you receive cash for every single transaction, it's... It's, you then need to have controls around the cash to make sure it doesn't go missing. You have to transport it to a bank, deposit it. You don't earn interest until you've deposited it. Um, there's an entire world around cash that's quite expensive, both for the merchant and for the bank. So now with the point of sale device, the money goes directly into the merchant's account. They, they can utilize that money almost straight away. Um, and then they pay a fee for that. Um, but the fee then is commiserate with the cost of cash that they would have incurred in any case. So essentially what we've created is, is a, it's a far more efficient ecosystem, uh, both for the retail customer, the swiping uh, customer, as well as the merchant, as well as the bank. After the break, FNB CEO Stephen Bohatu addresses how the bank is going to attend to the dissatisfaction what the bank's charges from some customers. We'll be back shortly. When running a business means... Where did I put that receipt? We can help you with instant accounting. Free software that does your bookkeeping for you. <laughs> when running a business means... Wait, why do you mean the container hasn't arrived? We help protect your business from risk with Mohwebi Insurance. And when it means... How do we pay our staff that don't have bank accounts? We help you make multiple payments directly to people's phones with e-wallet bulk send. At FNB, we're constantly innovating to help business owners at every stage of their journey. Welcome back. The First National Bank Botswana CEO, Stephen Bohatu, says they intend on embarking on a journey of educating customers on the various products available at the bank and what their charges are. We, we realise that uh, particularly in the retail segment, uh, they, there's, there, there are certain sub-segments um, that have expressed uh, discomfort with the charges. Um, we are addressing it in a number of ways. 
uh, one of the ways um, is to address it directly with those customers just to find the, to understand the nature of the complaint. Um, so we are engaging those customers to um, make them understand um, what, what products uh, they have, um, such as Bank Your Change. We are educating customers, uh, engaging them and educating them. Uh, insofar as indicating to them the options that they have. There are various options that, that are alternative channels that are available to any one customer. You can go into a branch, you can use an ATM ADT, you can actually use one of the POS machines, or you can go to a cash plus. Uh, and every time a customer does a transaction, we indicate to them um, how much it would have cost if they had used an alternative uh, channel. Um, the third thing is uh, similar to what Luke alluded to, which we've been talking about, where we have negotiated with uh, most of the MNOs uh, in the industry uh, that they should not charge customers for some uh, of our transactions. So we as a bank have decided that we will pay the MNOs for the charges that customers would have otherwise been charged for accessing our electronic channels. Uh, we continue as well to, to have workshops. Uh, we will have workshops with some of our customer segments uh, just to understand uh, how they understand uh, our electronic platforms, how they interact with them, get feedback from them um, so that we can uh, take those on board when we make decisions to review our tariffs. Uh, Luke, uh, the issue of tariffs, what is the plan uh, with those as far as the bank is concerned, the bottom line, the customers and understanding overall? The bank's intention and has been the case. We always keep tariff uh, increases to inflation or lower than inflation. And that we provide efficient banking solutions where the customer has an option to bank cheaper if they can bank smarter. Um, so really what our drive has been, so we'll do the inflationary increase, but we encourage our customers on a one-on-one -on -one basis to say, there was a cheaper way of doing this transaction. For example, you might use an e-wallet transaction versus a pay-to-sell. If the person you're sending the money to has got an FNB account, you can pay-to-sell. It's significantly cheaper than an e-wallet, and that have we've actually seen that success of driving those volumes through with a 41% increase in pay-to-sell, whereas a 30% increase in e-wallet. So there has been a drive from the bank to make sure that our customers bank smart. Stephen, um, the bank has shown a positive growth. But this is needless to say in an environment or in an economy that is highly dependent on diamonds, which we've seen the prices plummeting going down and the demand steadily declining as well. So in the event that eventually, because this is what we're seeing and we're predicting, um, the diamonds are unable to sustain the economy, what opportunities do you see um, for you know, economic sustenance? The diversification drive um, that we embarked on as a country a couple of years ago really now needs to start showing some signs um, of success. It's very, very important because with pressure that we are seeing on the diamond revenues, sort of the mining revenues, um, with the expected pressure, continued pressure, as a result of what is happening in Asia. I mean, China is one of our largest markets. And what is happening in now in China um, is that because of the coronavirus, everything has literally stopped. Uh, when that stops, it means uh, there is inactivity in industrialization in China, and that's going to have an impact on the demand for commodities in countries like Botswana. Uh, so um, that, that impact is going to be felt in a very large way. Uh, so the only way to get out of this uh, situation is actually to make sure that we implement projects that are meant to address the diversification of this economy um, that we've been talking about for a very long time. So some of those opportunities uh, have been identified uh, through the special economic zones. Um, it is important and uh, as private sector, like the minister requested, as private sector we are more than happy to jump uh, on board and assist uh, the likes of ZESA in attracting investments into this country so that we diversify the economy. Um, so there are various areas, there's the cattle industry, the leather, leather industry, um, there is the, the beef industry, there is the, the tourism industry. Uh, there are many sectors that if given the proper focus and attention, 
they will help us in diversification of this economy. Welcome back to First Issues. We're now joined by financial analyst Tsirofa Zutlung to give us her overall impressions of the FNB half-year results. Overall, um, they have some pretty impressive lines. I mean, especially on the deposit side, their ability to keep growing term deposits especially. Those are the cheaper type of deposits. Um, that was rather impressive, um, especially on the the fee income side as well, that even at a, on a high base, it st still keeps growing at um, a way above inflation. I mean, uh, one of the caveats to that would then become, is it more volume based or is it more the fee that's growing? Because um, one might start to say now that the fees are a bit too expensive or there's more that's being charged for it that shouldn't. So that, that's a balancing act, I think the bank, um, will probably look into just to make sure that they don't start out pricing themselves um, from the market. But overall, it's a good set of results. They've performed fairly well in the banking industry, but what have been some of the challenges that the banking sector continues to see within the market? I think one of the big challenges, credit growth is slowing. I mean, even from the numbers that they produce, the credit growth is around 3%, the growth in the advances. So it's a, it's a market-wide phenomenon that um, household borrowing is at all-time lows. Um, businesses aren't borrowing the way they used to. So you would hope that in, in a cycle where there's more investment, business um, credit, credit to businesses would, would pick up. So that's not really coming through, which is concerning as well going forward for the economy in that um, that means that business expectations, they're perhaps not as, as rosy as we think. I mean, you would also factor in the on the mining side that there's a lot of investment going there. But however, on the non-mining side of things, um, what does that mean for the economy if people are not investing in their businesses? So that's one of the key challenges that we're seeing. Um, but to counter that, you'll find that a lot of banks are now also really looking into their non-funded income, your fee income, your transactional volumes, and to, to encourage more usage of whether it's um, on online banking and some of the tools that they have there. Um, so that's why I did say that the bank has to be cognizant that they're not outpricing them from themselves out of the market because other banks are also looking to grow in that area. Thank you so much for joining us on the programme. Do join us again next week for more riveting conversations here on First Issues. Until then, have yourselves a pleasant evening. Good night. This program was brought to you by First National Bank of Botswana. FNB, how can we help you?